earlier, we took a look at potential energy functions. And essentially what we're going to do now is consider the graphical representation of those potential energy functions. However, that is a little bit of, um, does not quite capture the importance of this subject. It's hard to overstate the significance. For many scientists and engineers, and if you're a physical chemist or chemical engineer or atomic molecular physicist, there's a good chance you can spend the majority of your working career uh, working with potential energy curves. They're, they're central to so many aspects of, of science and engineering. So let's take a look at what a potential energy curve is and what it does for us. I, I want to, essentially, like I said before, it's just the graph of a potential energy function. But let's look at a specific example then. Let's go back to our, our tried and true, uh, we have some object in gravity. We're going to throw it up so it comes to some height and then comes back down. We're, this object has a mass, we're going to say of one kilogram. Um, you didn't realize it, but since we talked last, the Earth has gained some mass, and now the acceleration due to gravity has worked its way up to 10 meters per second squared exactly. And we're going to um, uh, launch this object with initial velocity of 50 meters per second, and then um, uh, watch what happens to it. Okay. And we're going to neglect air resistance. So, so what we know it happens, it, it goes up and, and it comes back down. So let's take a look at what's happening to its energy as it, as it goes up. So, so it um, starts with, so from either kinematics or conservation of energy, we know that it, it starts, well, just do conservation of energy. It starts with some, uh, all kinetic energy, assuming that our um, zero of potential energy is at the bottom. Well, let's go ahead and do that first. So uh, we're going to say our our zero of potential energy is here, zero of our coordinate system, and so our force is negative mg, and so our potential energy then is equal to a positive m uh, g x. So our initial um, energy is zero potential all kinetic. Our final then when it reaches its height is all potential and zero kinetic. And so our velocity is equal to, well, our height, which is what we're looking for. That is um, V squared over 2G. V squared over 2g. And, and we solved this using kinematics as well. So if we launched up with 50, I'm sorry, I would take that back, 10, <laughs> 10 meters per second. All right, 10 meters per second. Um, then v squared is 100, and our uh, g is just 10 divided by 20, and so it goes up an amount of 5 meters. Okay, so so up here the height is is five, so one, two, three, four. Let's look at the. We know what's happening as the thing goes up, it comes back down. Let's look at what happens to the energy. Uh, the energy is conserved because the only force is a uh, conservative that's doing work on the system. So at uh, x, we can look at our kinetic our potential and our total energy. So at zero, what is our uh, total kinetic energy? So that's um, one half mv squared. And so the mass is one, v squared is 100 divided by two, and so that's 50. It had zero potential, and so our total is, is 50. This is all joules. Okay, so at x is equal to 1 then, now our potential energy goes up to at 1 mg, this is now 10 
right? Because mass is 1, we say j is 10, and so x, so x is equal to 1 or potential is equal to 10. Um, our total energy has not changed, so our kinetic then is down to 40. We don't know exactly what the speed is. We can calculate it, but we don't, we don't care at the moment. So at 2 now, again, we can calculate our potential energy is now up to 20. Our total is still 50, so our kinetic is 30. I think you can see a trend coming. So at 3, the potential is 30. Kinetic is 20 to keep our total. 4, 10, and at 5, 40, 50. At 5, now all of our um, energy is potential. That's what we had up here at 5 meters and the velocity is zero. Now, as it comes back down, it, it reverses, so it comes back down to a position at four, and we get this back again, 50, three, two, one, and I can't, didn't quite manage to fit it on my screen here. Zero, but three is now 30 and 20, 50, two is 20 and 30, 1 is 40 and 10, and now all kinetic back again. Okay, so, so we can see how as the object travels in space here, the total energy is conserved, and it exchanges then the distribution of energy between potential and kinetic as it goes back to its height and comes back down. Okay, so now we get, let's go ahead and as I promised, plot the potential energy function. So u as a function of x was equal to mg times x, and in fact mg was 10. So if we do that, what does that look like. So here's as a function of x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is x, u of x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so this is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 1, 2, 4, 5. And our potential energy function is just now a straight line. It should go through these points. Ah. Right. So that's what our potential energy function looks like. Now, our system had a total energy of 50 joules. So let's go ahead and draw that line here. This is our, our system, and it had uh, 50 joules of energy. And now we can look at this curve and use it to interpret the motion of the object. Imagine the object now starts at, where my object starts, at x is equal to 0. My object here, my red, starts here. And then as it goes forward, 1, 2, 3, 4, five, and and then it comes back four. And at each point, now, we can go down here and see, here's the potential energy it has at that, at that time. And so the potential energy curve shows us how much potential energy we have. Here's potential energy. And then here's the kinetic energy which is what's left, which is 40. So as it goes here, we go to the potential energy curve, and it shows us that all the, the, the space below the potential energy curve, that's the amount of potential energy that it has, and the space above the potential energy curve shows us the kinetic energy that it has. Then at 3, it has this amount of kinetic energy and this amount of potential. And then at 4, it has this amount of kinetic energy and this amount of potential. And then at x is equal to 5, 
it had all potential energy. In fact, you could think about the object rolling up this hill. It has a potential energy hill. It starts with some speed and it rolls up to where it reaches the top and then rolls back down. At, it has its highest kinetic energy here and its lowest kinetic energy, in fact, zero here. But it's also important, I think, to, to think about this purple line, which this represents its total energy. This is the total amount that it has. And you think of the, the object moving through space where the potential energy curve divides the amount of potential energy, which is below the line, to the amount of kinetic energy, which is above the line be, between the potential energy curve and the total energy curve. And so this, and now the other point to identify is this here, where the potential energy curve crosses the total energy curve, this is the turning point. That is a point where there's no uh, velocity, and it's a point where the velocity changes direction. And so that's the uh, an important key, and we see that from the trajectory. It goes out to this point, then turns around and comes back. The final thing that we can get from this is recall that the um, the force in one dimension, my hair, the force in one dimension is equal to negative the derivative of the potential energy with respect to position. And so now we can see that just from this line here, then the force is negative mg. That's now the slope of this graph. So just like we used to interpret uh, velocities as the slope of the position graph, now we can interpret the force as the slope of the potential energy curve. And so here, where we have a constant slope, a line, we know that the force is constant. It also is showing us the direction. So this is a positive slope, that means the force is negative. At each point, the, there is a force that is uh, pointing in the negative x direction, because it has a positive slope. And so again, that's what's happening at this turning point. This force has stopped it, and it turns around because there's a force then pointing the opposite direction away from the uh, away from the turning point, and it is that force which changes the direction of the particle. So this is a simple example of a potential energy curve. We'll look. Yet uh, another important one is for the spring, but this has all the essential elements. The position is a function of time, and then how from, uh, from that curve you can see how the system divides its potential energy and kinetic energy from the total energy, and also uh, the turning points, and how the force interacts with the system.